that seems to be what uh, allows this to work. So, by the way, this is a much better motor. This is all metal. Strong. But the only way to fix it, I have to pull the USB cable out. The light's all on the back of the chair there. Groovy. Yeah, killed, it killed the software. One amp isn't enough. Um, I'm thinking maybe I need more. And then that way that will drive just the relays. Oh, you gotta be f***ing kidding me, dude. David, uh, AVD, he has been helping me for the last several hours on uh, hauntforum.com. And while we're really not sure what the problem is, we've been able to work around it. And we no longer have this issue. Excuse my wrist braces. I can't make it fail. No matter how hard I try. That's about just all the strength I have. I can't make it fail. So, I think we got it. What was the problem? There seems to be continuity between all three of these poles here. And I think it has something to do with this capacitor and the way this motor is wired to go forward and reverse internally. Um, Dave's talking about phase sequences and motor windings and <laughs> this is way above my head. All I know about phase is what I learned from Star Trek and phasers and that ain't much. Nothing to do with the real world. Um, but in any event, uh, a 500 millisecond delay between toggling forward and reverse that seems to be what uh, allows this to work. So big thanks to Dave because I was uh, losing my freaking mind. I'm gonna put all of this stuff back on this one. I'm gonna put this one back in the chair, connect that, put this back on there, and this on there, and the head back on there. And I think we're gonna be just about done with this thing because I can't get it to fail. 500 milliseconds, a half a second delay between changing uh, forward and reverse seems to be the issue. Thank you, Dave, very much. Really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna hook the wires back up to this Shiatsu motor, take them off of this one that I was using for testing purposes. Probably should re uh, put the capacitor back on. Probably put that on last, I guess. Oh, by the time I get done wiring this, hopefully the soldering iron will be warm and I can desolder these stuff off of here so I can reconnect with these connectors I put on. That was supposed to be my strain relief. <laughs> I'll have a hell of a time getting this on there later, so I might as well just do it now. Getting so good at this, I don't need a wiring diagram. <laughs> Just throw a wire nut on there because I don't have the patience to look for whatever that insulator was, wherever the hell it is. Let's give it a test. Also gonna have to rewire the controller, but let's do one step at a time so as to minimize errors. Let's run a little torque test on this thing. Strong. All right, so even though the motor might seize up a little bit, the circuit never stops working, which is perfect. That's what I want. This motor doesn't seem to be as strong as the other one, but who cares? It's uh, good enough. Uh, interestingly, when I took all this apart, I was able to get that little plate off of here. If you remember from a few episodes ago, I had out these snippers. I was cutting the plastic cup around this thing. Well, it actually unscrewed off. I didn't know that. 
You know what I'm thinking too is I'd love to be able to get some of these screws back into this thing, but I don't know if I can. Oh, maybe I can. Maybe now that I've got this platform, I can. Of course, I have to do it at the chair because I've already bolted into the stupid chair. Let's put this off to the side temporarily. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the additional power supply that I wired up uh, with this hacked up USB cable to give the relays their own separate voltage, their own separate power. Um, they don't need it. Ground back on. Power was always on because we used the jumper instead, which is who knows where. That's uh, long since gone, I'm sure. I'm gonna borrow the one off of this relay. I have tons of jumpers upstairs. What that jumper does is power comes in here, gets jumpered over to that, and then powers all of these relays. So when you remove that jumper, um, power doesn't go to the relays. And you actually hook up power right there a separate power supply to power just the relays and then have the Arduino power the rest of the... That way the Arduino controls this part and then you've got... You can have separate power for the relays, so that's what that jumper's for. And when you put it on, the power comes from the Arduino. Jumps over here, powers everything. Before I go closing things up though, gonna do a little test again. Make sure I'm right. I still do have the USB cable hanging out of the side of this thing. Out of the top. I kind of wish now that I'd run one in there and... Just had it constantly connected to the port, that way I would have one to connect if I need to reprogram. Because I'm going to bring my laptop back down here and run this thing and get a perfect sequence that I want, but not right this instant. Right now we're going to test again. Recall the wiring, this one plug powers the strobe light, the shiatsu motor, and the beacon. That power gets transferred over to this cable. That has a quick disconnect that I put in here. So now AC power is running into the controller and we're just going to plug in the power supply for the Arduino. That's it. So oh, still works, good. Put this back onto the chair. But before I do that, because I know I'm gonna use this Shiatsu motor, at least I think I am. Can't get this cap off though. These caps, this, by the way, this is a much better motor. This is all metal. This gives the PVC even a place to rest. It's got this little platform here. You can see it, uh, let the PVC even sit on there. I mean, you could do a, a heck of a lot more with this than uh, with the other one. desoldered switch with all the wires off of it now. Let's give it a little test. Good enough. Ready to go for a different prop later. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Shiatsu motor back on the stand that I built on the electric chair and get the prop reassembled. All right, so I've got everything hooked back up. I'm going to do what I tried to do several vlog episodes ago, and that is connect my laptop to this thing and get my sequence just right. Okay, so I'm still having a lot of trouble with the four banger software for some reason. It keeps dying on me, even though the Arduino is working correctly for the most part, but it fails every time with the software connected directly to it. If I click this button to send played states to the controller in real time, that is not working for me. If I click this, and then I go down here and run the sequence, it's going to fail here. Yeah, it's the same thing I was having the other day. But the only way to fix it, I have to pull the USB cable out. And meanwhile, my controller is stuck and my prop is animating. So, however, if I don't connect this and the prop activates on its own, I don't have an issue. This makes uh, programming it in real time impossible. But that's all right. We can work around it. I'm not going to sit here and keep trying all night like I did the other night. That was just uh, a waste of time. 
Oh, it just instantly crashes. Now, I didn't even have the controller fail that time. It doesn't, it seems to be losing communication with the COM port every time. Because right, I know right now it's not, it's not reading what's going on. It's completely bugged. It thinks the port is there. The port is there. But the software is not able to read from it. I have no idea. Yeah, and it's, it's crapping out. Fine without the load. As soon as I put the, uh, the load on the relays, and I've already been through all this debugging of there's not enough power for the relays and all that. So I know that's not, that's not the case. But as soon as I hook up my, uh, my AC through it, it's a problem. And right now it's already lost communication with the port, the software. It doesn't know what's going on. It thinks it's still connected, but it's not. And it's going to crash right here. System IO exception. So that's exactly what it is. Oh, it's something to do with that motor, with that motor hooked up to these relays. Uh, it makes the COM port disappear or something on the Arduino. It makes the USB port stop functioning temporarily. And uh, that's, I think, freaking the software out. And, ah, oh, there's just no way around it, man. So I've been spending a lot of time with the software, trying to get the sequence just right. I'm going back and forth with different lengths of sequences. So to help me get this working right, I've stuck some green tape on the unused lever on the Shiatsu motor and put a piece there to line it up on the casing. And that way I'm able to control or at least um, tell how far I'm going off of rotation before I get back to center. And that's what I'm trying to do here is to keep the prop centered. I've got a very short sequence. It's only three movements, but it's taking me a long time to get to that point, <laughs> believe it or not. I think I pretty much got it. I've run this a couple of times. And I'm getting back to center every time, so that's perfect. I'm just gonna take that, kind of duplicate that sequence and invert it so that it goes the opposite direction. As long as I keep those sequences the right length, I should be able to get the prop back to upright, which is where he is now. So as ridiculous as it sounds, I'm actually gonna pull this thing back up off of the Shiatsu motor, cut about an inch off of the PVC because um, it's still making a lot of, starting to make noise now, and it's, I can hear that it's, it's straining, and I don't want to mess up this thing in here that I've put in with the epoxy. I don't want that breaking in there. So, um, take a little bit less, a little bit more stress off the motor, and the, the reason I didn't do that before was because I was worried about this chest plate here not being able to, or actually being the same size as, the, as this pipe, but it doesn't have to be. This can actually come down that extra amount. It can go down even further. And the other benefit of that is his is, uh, arms are looking ridiculously long. It just looks abnormal to me. Like your elbow is way up here, not down here. I'm gonna cut that extra inch off. Need to secure this head because it keeps it's, it's starting to come loose and i need it to be on there good and tight so i was talking about earlier about maybe putting a piece of pvc through the back here gluing that in and then going in through that with a screw into this if i had a really thin piece of pvc that would be ideal but i don't know what's the difference is I mean, can i just go right through this stuff yeah let's do that <laughs> forget all that other stuff Every time, every time I want to record audio, I've been down here not recording audio for hours. And the minute I turn the camera and the mic on, my oil heater comes on. Like one here and one in the neck. I don't know, that's probably the thinnest part. It'd be tough with two of them for it to fail. <laughs> probably should have done it when it was horizontal. Okay, I took it apart again because that's all I seem to do with this thing. Just take it apart and put it back together over and over again. God 
knows I don't have any long screws anymore. I used them all on that stupid platform I built. <laughs> happening here. This is what I was afraid of. I'm just going all around making a big old mess now. That's what I was afraid of. So you get one screw. I hope that. We'll see. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with this prop. I just need to attach the legs. I'm just gonna screw those pieces of PVC into the motor there. This is the sequence now. So it took a lot of time to uh, program that to get him back up vertical, but I think it works well enough. This is actually the view from the back, not that anybody would ever see it, but it does help to illuminate the prop during Halloween. There's the uh, lights all on the back of the chair there. So it's, uh, there's a lot of flashing lights and things going on. One of the comments was I should add a, some crackers to the thing. It's not really necessary. Of course the screaming and all that will be a lot louder. You know, this is probably more indicative of what it would look like. <laughs> So, it's not the best electrocution prop I've ever seen. It's not the worst. It was an experiment, and I, I don't know. It, it's okay. It works. It'll work well enough. Ow, damn it, that's hot. I'm down to 15 minutes already on my camera. I haven't even done anything yet. And of course, crimping tool or no, these things still come off on me. Oh, sh Whoops. <laughs> what fun is it if you don't melt something? So to help me get this son of a I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I know I hate this thing. How about that? People thumb downing my vlog. How dare you? How much work this is? Just ask Rich, he'll tell you. All right, so I took it apart again. Where the is my mic? All right, what the is up with the What? Okay. Yeah, it's not the greatest electrocution prop. I never said it was. It's mine. I made it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> where's yours? <laughs> Before you shit all over mine. I'm just mad. Mad because bad. Yeah, whatever. Or the don't go down vote my videos in instead. God, get so, so mad. Mad because bad video. <laughs> Baby.